All right, so I'll call this meeting to order. Um, before I get started, let's introduce everyone in the meeting. I'm Patrick Hegel. When I call your name, um, I'm acting as uh, chair tonight. When I call your name, please confirm you can hear me by, can hear me, uh, by verifying that you're present. I'll start with the commissioners. Uh, Travis said he's not going to be here. Uh, Jonathan? Present. Uh, Emily? Present. Yeah. Bully, we're expecting Sandy to join at some point, but we'll continue on without her. Uh, and for the staff, uh, Leah? I'm here. And Jan? I'm here. And then if we have uh, speakers out there yet for uh, 13 Salisbury Street, I guess that's Leah. That's me. Um, and then 124 Westboro Road. Do we have uh, Haley, Hannah, Scott, Josh, or Drew out there? We have Josh and Drew so far. Okay. And then at 88 Worcester Street, uh, Matthew Byrne and, or, and or Christopher Horn. Good evening, Matt Byrne here. Right. can hear you. Uh, this open meeting of the Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely via Zoom, pursuant to the Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, as most recently extended on March 29th, 2023. Uh, access information for the public has been provided on the town website. This meeting is being recorded. Please remember to mute yourself on your phone or your computer when you're not speaking. If you're using the dial-in telephone feature, you can mute yourself by pressing star six. Uh, as, act as acting chair, I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. Please note that you will not have screen sharing privileges, but staff can display any visuals per your queue. After speakers conclude their remarks, I will invite each Commissioner, to, pro to provide any comments, questions, or motions. After the commissions, commissioners have spoken, I will allow each commissioner to, uh, I will allow public comments to be spoken by participants. Uh, participants must use the raised raise hand feature by clicking the hand icon of, at the bottom right of the Zoom menu bar to indicate if you'd like to speak. If you're using the dial-in dial -in telephone feature, please press star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute when you are called on. <laughs> Participants raising their hand will be recognized one at a time and will be promoted to speak. Public comments will be followed by a commission and applicant responses. Finally, each vote taken will be conducted by a roll call vote. As a reminder, the commission is concerned with state and town wetlands and storm water regulations. Concerns outside of this purview need to be addressed by the appropriate boards, for example, road conditions with the select board and traffic concerns with the planning board. Um, so our first public hearing is at 7.15, uh, and we have a few continuations and action items. Is there something we recommend starting with, Leah? Um, how about meeting minutes? We just have August 8th tonight. That was another three-hour marathon video for Jan, so tabling <laughs> the September ones until next time, but August 8th is ready for you guys. Okay. Uh... Has everyone reviewed and does anyone have any comments on the August 8th meeting minutes? No comments. No comments. So do I have a motion? I make I a motion no. to approve the August 8th meeting minutes. Second that. Right. Motion and a second. Um, we'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Jonathan? Yes. Emily? Yes. And I'm a yes as well to approve the August 8th meeting minutes. Okay. Um, yeah. So our other two action items kind of correspond to a couple of the hearings we have tonight. So um, I'm thinking we save those till we're in those hearings. In the meantime, I can let you guys know a couple things. Um town meeting is on monday the let me just make sure i have the right number 16th we do not have any warrant articles um but the town moderator does vote to um what's the word i'm looking for um like ratify our appointment to the lake quinsigamon commission uh just the way the wording goes for the Lake Quinsigamon Commission charge says that 
the rep from the town of Grafton will be appointed by the moderator. Um, so I let Travis know his name's going to come up uh, at town meeting, but she does those appointments first thing before warrant articles and all that. And I don't expect him to have to be there. Uh, so that's the only thing that would be specific to us for town meeting. Um, in addition, I did want to give a reminder that our next meeting is on the 24th. So it's in three weeks instead of being in two weeks um, because of the town meeting week slash elections and things. Um, so we can send that out with an email reminder as well as it gets closer, but I just want you guys to know um, 1024 is the next one. Thank you. I'm trying to think of what else we can fill a few minutes with here. So the usage authorization is related to the 17, 715 RDA? Correct. So we're finally squaring away what needs to happen um, in those couple of wet spots on the trail for Hassanamas at Woods. Um, so that'll be kind of twofold, the RDA will cover the wetlands permitting side, the usage authorization will cover just them doing work on conservation land. And the certificate of compliance we have is for 88 Worcester Street, um, which they're before us now for their current filing. So we can talk about each of those in, in those hearings. Okay. Leah, do we wanna take one of the public hearings ahead of it so we don't just burn six minutes and then start with that and then pick up the 715 when that's done or do that's we true wait? yeah or we could do that out. i don't want to delay the 750 i mean the 715 as long as we take it after 715 is acceptable but correct again up yeah, to five minutes Patrick. uh do you think either one of those is shorter um, 88 Worcester is probably the shorter of the two. Okay. Why don't I, uh, read that one in, I guess. Um, so this is for 88 Worcester Street, fuel tank removal, pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Grafton Wetlands Prote Protection Bylaw, the Grafton Cons Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing to act upon a notice of intent and application for Grafton Wetlands bylaw permit for the removal of underground storage tanks and appurtenances uh, at 88 Worcester Street, Grafton, Massachusetts. Um, the application materials, meeting link, and access information are posted on the Conservation Commission page on graftonmass.gov. Um, and let's, oh. Uh, so here we're picking that up as a continuance. Who is here to speak for that? Hi, I'm Matt Byrne, senior ecologist with BSC Group. Uh, Chris Horan here with Synergy Environmental. Um, so we we were with you um, <clears throat> on September fifth, and. Um, we ended up with a continuance to tonight to uh, wrap up a, a handful of outstanding issues. Um, I on the um, last week, I responded to um, an email with a, a number of of uh, requested bits of information. Um, and uh, there were a couple things that we covered. Um, one of the things that the, the chairperson mentioned uh, was whether or not there was any um, upcoming FEMA flood map um, revisions uh, expected. And so um, one of the things I did was take a look at the um, expected uh, preliminary products issued by FEMA. Uh, there are no updates coming for Grafton. So um so that was not an issue. The project plan that you see uh, displayed on the screen 
Um, we had a, a couple of minor revisions to to square away. We've done that. I I, I think we've we've met the expectations that were um, laid out to us uh, from the commission. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, so I think that we're in good shape on that. Would would you know be happy to have any conversation that needs to be taken. Um, with regard to this, as, as you're probably familiar, this is an existing paved site. Um, so the, the 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 actual work will be contained within the paved area. Um, we have requested the bylaw waiver so that we can establish the erosion control line at the edge of pavement, which is inside the 25 foot um, uh, no no disturb line. <clears throat> And um, you know we're we're not going to disturb beyond the pavement. We're just cutting the pavement, removing the tank, um, and uh, and and patching things back up. Uh, but the waiver allows us to put the uh, sediment controls at the edge of pavement, which which we think will be a little more effective in installation. Um, we have. Um, I don't know if you want to stop and talk about the plan at all, or if if, if we're in good shape on that, we can move on to other other issues um leo was there anything on our end that we were waiting I on don't, i don't have any outstanding items anymore um i was at the point of uh i would let you guys know a few potential conditions so if you want to um if matt if you want to keep talking through sure. the updates and then if the commission has any questions and then we can circle back to to me Okay, great. Um, the stockpiles, we did talk about these stockpile locations being closer to the wetland. Um, and, it, it, you know, that's something that we can we can work with the site contractor to move it as far from the wetland as possible. But um, we do have a detail on best management practices for, for maintaining those stockpiles um, in the case that they are... Um, present overnight in, in any given circumstance they are they'll be on a poly sheet they'll be surrounded by erosion controls and they'll be covered um but we can work to move them as far from the wetland as possible but as you know the site is all wetland is all riverfront area it's um so it, we are constrained in that respect um let's see we we amended the wetlands bylaw permit application to, to include the request for waiver. You received a, a check for that a couple of weeks ago. Um, the erosion and sedimentation control plan narrative what, uh, had, had a reference to hay. We've removed that. It's, uh, everything will be straw. Um, obviously, co erosion controls will be inspected. We would expect that the commission will inspect them after they're installed. Um, so, you know, any, any concerns that come up, uh, will be addressed. The one thing that may be a sticking point, and I hope we find a, a, a way over it, uh, is a dewatering plan. We are hopeful. We were, we were, we were told to provide a dewatering plan for review. Um, we are hopeful that dewatering will not be necessary. And therefore we have left it up to the contractor that gets hired for this job to make that determination. Um, if what we have said in the in the plan and in narrative and in our in what the contracting that we'll do, we will say that if dewatering is determined to be necessary, a plan must be approved by the commission. So I would expect a, a special condition in any order of conditions that that addresses that. Um, and, and just sets up that that check um, that the I know the commission is concerned with. So hopefully we we are able to do this uh, task without dewatering, but that would give us a, an opportunity for you to to review any dewatering plan that became was apparently necessary. Um, we understand there's an outstanding or there's a there's an order of conditions for this for the actual installation of these these uh, tanks 30 years ago that was never closed out with a, a certificate of compliance. Um, we did talk with the engineers that 
are sort of currently employed by Synergy and they were in grade school when this project was done. And so we are not really in a position to be able to get an engineer to stamp a plan saying that, that it was done according to a permit. Um, but we included in the materials we submitted to the commission um, a, uh, a statement that that uh, that to the best of our ability to to know, we, we feel that uh, you know we're confident that it was uh, the project was done according to the order of conditions, and so we request the the certificate of compliance to close that out so that we can go forward with this with this project. Um, and I think I think that was everything. So I would stop and, and entertain discussion or questions that you might have. Okay. Leah, do you have um, anything you want to co cover or should I open it to the commission? Uh, why don't you go around the commission first? Right. Uh, Jonathan, Emily, do you have anything you want to, any comments, questions? I do not. No questions for me, thank you. Um. I don't think I have any questions at this time either, so. Okay. Do you want me to take you guys through um, special conditions? Sounds good. All right. Um, and I guess as a side reminder, we will need um, a separate vote on the waiver request, um, as Matt mentioned, for the erosion control within the no disturb. I would recommend granting that waiver. And then I have three... Uh, special conditions. One, uh, the measures in the erosion and sedimentation control plan dated September 26, 2023 shall be implemented. Two, um, if necessary, prior to commencement of work, a dewatering plan shall be submitted to the commission for approval. Dewatering activities shall be monitored daily to ensure that sediment-laden water is appropriately settled prior to discharge Water shall not be discharged directly into an area subject to jurisdiction of the Wetlands Protection Act or Grafton Wetlands Protection Bylaw. And third, management of groundwater and soil collected during ex excavation and dewatering activities shall be monitored, monitored by an LSP in accordance with Mass DEP regulations. All excavated materials not reused on the site shall be removed from the site and legally disposed of. Great. Does the applicant have any issues with any of those condition conditions? No, uh, Christopher, I, I, I defer to you on on answering that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. No, I, I don't think we have any issues. So that all sounds reasonable. I think the dewatering plan, if it comes up, is reasonable um, to submit that as needed for our review. Uh, if if it's not needed, that. That seems reasonable to me. Um, uh, other than that, is there anything else we need to know on this one, Leah, before taking a vote? Um, just a reminder to open it to the public and then do the, the waiver request before you do the closing the hearing. Point. Um, so I would like to open it to the public for any comment. If you have, if anyone out there has it, uh, any comment on this, please raise your hand and we'll promote you to be able to speak. And I'll give that a minute for anyone out there. Not too many other people out there, but just in case. And do you want to do the, the certificate of compliance vote after the one for the new order? Um, does it make a difference which, what order we do it in? Not exactly. <laughs> okay. But yeah, let's just do that. Okay. Um, seeing no public comment, uh, does anyone from the commission have any other comments or questions? If not, um, does anyone have a motion for the uh, waiver request 
for work within the no disturb. Make a motion to grant the waiver requested for installation of erosion control within the no disturb for 88 Worcester Street. Second that. Vote. Second is um, take a roll call vote. Jonathan? Yes. Emily? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. And do I have a motion to um, close the hearing and issue an order? Condition? What am I looking at? Sorry. I can make a motion, Patrick, if you like. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I lost my place. And... That's all right. Uh, I want I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and issue the order of conditions with the special note, uh, the special conditions noted by Leah during this meeting. I second that. Motion and a second. Um, take a vote. Uh, Jonathan? Yes. Emily? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Uh, so the motion passes. And uh, finally, do I have a motion on the request for a certificate of compliance for 88 Worcester Street? Um, I'll make a motion to issue the certificate of compliance for 88 Worcester Street. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, how do you vote? Yes. Yes. Emma? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So that should be the three motions we need, correct? Yep, all set. All right, we're all set then. I thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, have a good night. Thank you. Okay, so with that, I can open the 715 hearing for... I was, that, I was actually going to say, if you want to do 124 Westboro, next because we have that team here um we did reach out to the folks who uh want to do the work at hassan and Messet woods i'm not sure if they're going to be attending or not but they're not online yet so if you want to delay the 715 and do 124 westboro give them some more time to hop online yeah that sounds good uh let's see i'll read that one in So, notice of intent for 124 Westboro Road, um, pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Protection Act, Grafton Stormwater Management Bylaw and Grafton Wetlands Protection Bylaw, the Grafton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing to act upon a notice of intent application for Grafton Stormwater Bylaw Permit and application for Grafton Wetlands Bylaw Permit for the construction of warehouses at 124 Westboro Road, Grafton, Massachusetts. Applicant application materials, meeting link, and other information can be found on the Conservation Commission online page online. Um, so that being read in, should we uh, jump right into it? With uh, whoever's here to speak for that. Yep, uh, Leah, you, you okay with us beginning? Sure, absolutely. Great. Uh, hi again, Josh Swirling, um, professional engineer and principal with Bowler Engineering. I'm here on behalf of GFI Partners. Also with me tonight is Drew Garvin with Bowler, uh, Scott Jordan with Egotech, Haley Palazzolo with GFI Partners, and Hannah Chido Chidovich. Um, in terms of what we've done since our last meeting, um, we've addressed the Graves peer review comment letter dated 823. Um, we've incorporated some LID measures as Sandy had requested at our last hearing to the extent practicable, including um, some at grade conveyance behind both building A and uh, at the front of building A. Uh, I'm sorry, building B via a swale. Um, we have adjusted all but one reference uh, to hay bales to uh, indicate that they need to be straw. Uh, the last reference will be addressed on our uh, soil erosion plans once we finalize, once we submit the final plans. 
this looks like it's the updated overall site plan. Is that correct, Chan? So we can see, you can see the culvert has been added just beneath the R on Westboro Road, um, sheet north. We have added snow storage areas along the perimeters of the parking fields. Um, as well as on the edges of the loading areas. Uh, we have provided a phasing plan to accompany the waiver request that we had made. Um, we have responded to the DEP comments that we had received, and we've addressed the planning board comments as well as their traffic engineers peer review comments, which Part of that process with the traffic engineers peer review got into further evaluating the adequacy of our stopping site distances. And the peer reviewer asked that we look at several things, including the actual travel speed, not just the posted speed on Route 30. Um, and it resulted in the need for us to evaluate some vegetation maintenance within the wetland area. No disturbance. Uh, Scott Jordan is here. We were out in the field with both our traffic consultants and Scott Jordan um, to look at the specific area that would require some maintenance. Uh, he has provided a letter to the commission identifying what work would be required. He's here to present that if the commission would like. Um, and that's kind of big picture in a nutshell where we are today. So I'll pause and see if the commission wants to talk about any of those items or get further information. Um, Leah, do you have any comments at this point that you need to, that you want to jump? No, I think we can go into, um, into the details about the, the tree trimming that's needed. Okay, let's uh, go, go into that. Hi, Leah. Uh, Scott Jordan from Ecotech. Would you like me to, to speak to that now, Leah? Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if you're able to uh, zoom in to the driveway on Westboro Road access point at the top of the page. <clears throat> yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, so uh, as Josh mentioned, there was uh, a request to evaluate the the sight lines, um, particularly looking westward um, with regard to wetland vegetation. As you can see, the there is a uh, demarcated sight line, has an arrow to the left of the page um, that crosses over the wetland in the vicinity of wetland flag AA63 to about AA69 or 70. Uh, we were out and uh, we looked at uh, if any trees would have to be removed to meet the sight line requirements and thankfully none would have to be removed. Um, but the uh, project uh, traffic engineer did see uh, a total of 12 shrubs that we would like to trim um, and two limbs from red maple trees that we would like to trim. Uh, we don't propose to remove any of those plants, any of those specimens. Um, we thought that um, it might be a good idea to provide uh, mitigation plantings in kind um, for just to allow the trimming um, to occur. So what we've proposed is uh, four red maple saplings, three black cherry saplings, one red oak sapling, uh, and a total of six shrubs, one northern arrowwood, one blueberry, one win uh, three winter berries, and one American elderberry. And we will plant those um, as close to uh, the vicinity of where the trimming is gonna happen as possible. Um, where it's appropriate. Um, my protocol requires that uh, I'm on site to to supervise that work. And again, no no specimens will actually be removed, just trimming 
um, lower to provide the appropriate sight lines. I just had a quick question related to that specific. So, and Leah, you you can stop me if I'm going on down the wrong path here, but we're trimming these for sight line, but we're trimming shrubs that are going to grow back, right? So is there a maintenance plan for these shrubs that says every so many months or years that they get trimmed? Or is that something that once that's, that's the responsibility of the end user or what what how does that get handled if we're trimming shrubs that are in this or disturber in this in this in this area that we need to get approval for how do they handle it in the future when they go to trim those shrubs again i think i would ask that they be we be allowed to trim them annually Okay, so that could be a potential special condition, Leah, if that's something that's amenable yeah. to doing. Okay. Yeah, I have that seen that type of condition before, perpetual condition. Um, trimming is necessary uh, in this type of application. Okay, that answers my question. Hey, Andrew? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you mind if I hop in for a second? Yeah. Um, so I was just going to say that, um, I know you don't know the exact spot where they will go right now, um, Scott, but I think your narrative said, um, that they'd likely be in the no disturb zone, correct? So, um, there's one, and I should have mentioned this one, only one plant specimen, um, within the, the 25, we, we evaluated the 25 foot no disturb zone also. There's one red maple shrub. Um, so it's not even a sapling yet that we wanted to trim. Um, we will plant a red maple sapling in that same general area. And also you may have noticed Leah, uh, we are proposing three black cherries and one red oak. Those were right at the edge of the uh, wetland, probably around flag AA66 if I recall. <clears throat> And um, those are upland plants. Um, they were at the toe of the roadway fill. Um, we would we would throw those over in the uh, NDZ, um, not in the wetland, just to give them a better chance to survive. Okay, so I think because um, because it's not so much the trimming um, and the pruning and the no disturb, but I think because planting is then going to be in the no disturb i think you're going to need to do a, a second waiver request uh to work in the no disturb on top of we already have your other one for um um for phasing for greater than five acres open at a time i just think we need to add a second one uh for work in the no disturb you guys can just follow up with that um in writing to us uh with the with the fee to the office we can take care of that Any other comments from the commissioners at this point? I, I just had one. So Leah, are we still awaiting? So some of the notes that I'm looking at say awaiting some comments. Is that something we're still getting into or did that all get addressed? Yeah. Um, so these guys did do their response to the Graves letter, but we are still waiting on the follow-up letter from Graves basically signing off on those revisions. I did check in with Jeff Walsh today. Unfortunately, he did not have it ready in time for this meeting. So we are waiting on his final sign off. Um, the I can take you guys through the rest of my notes if that's what you'd like to do next. Sure, that'd be helpful. Um, so the DEP comments, a couple of outstanding ones, I think we can just turn into a finding. So. Basically, they DEP was talking about um, like verifying what's BVW versus isolated, um, and also whether or not some of the isolated wetlands could be um, isolated land subject to flooding. 
I get why they would want to make that um, determination, but more so if the applicant was going to be proposing impacts, they're not proposing impacts. So we don't, you know, we don't have resource areas we need to quantify for the sake of impacts. So I would just suggest that the commission include a finding um, that we're not making those determinations at this time. We can be in agreement with the with the location of the flags and just not necessarily BVW versus IVW and IVW versus ILSF. Um, if that's something you guys are in agreement with, then that would that would be a finding that would be included in our final vote. Basically just um saying we're not touching that one right now. Right. Yeah. And then um, I just had the note about the new waiver that they'll need to request, the waiver that they previously requested, which we'll need a vote on. Um, and then other than waiting for Jeff's final letter, I had just drafted uh, some special conditions, whether you want to discuss those tonight or not, uh, just let me know. Is there anything from those we should discuss tonight that uh, would have an impact on anything? Um, or would it make sense to discuss it at the next? So one... If we discuss sorry. it now, wouldn't that just give them the opportunity at least to provide comment or adjust? So it might be better to hear them all now, but... Yeah, correct. Um, so before I go through all of them, I will say there are a couple that I wanted to discuss with the commission. One would be no disturb signage. Um, Jan, if you can just zoom out so we can see overall. Um, I was gonna propose no disturb signage to go in at all locations that are immediately adjacent to wetlands. Um, so, you know, pretty much anywhere where a wetland is, is coming right up to their edge of disturbance. That was the minimum I was going to propose, but I wanted to ask you guys if you felt like you wanted to put no disturb signage um, at the limit of disturbance in other places uh, to preserve some extra some extra land, seeing as um, the site, you know, is kind of maxed out now. Um, so I didn't know if you wanted flexibility in there or if you just want them immediately adjacent to wetlands. And then the second part of that question is uh, barrier wise for the no disturb. They do have chain link fence and guardrails at nearly all the spots where the wetlands are close again. Um, but the one exception is the AC wetland system, which um, Jan, if you can actually zoom back in, it's a uh, in the south, um, trying to think of which one that is. I believe it's the center. The biggest one there should be the AC flags. Yeah, so just at the rear of that parking lot, if you wanted to add um, a requirement for some kind of barrier. Um, like I said, the other spots already have chain link fence and guardrails, but I noticed that this one does not. So I guess those are questions for the commission. I'll let you work out and then I can take you through the rest of the conditions as well. As folks are contemplating that, can I just ask to clarify one thing? Cause I thought I heard you say one word, but maybe meant sure. something else. So um, as we're looking at like that AC, area for example i assume we could you're just suggesting you know prior to that woods line um we have some signage there maybe you know in my mind two signs in that area before you get to the new woods line that would say you know whatever you wanted to say well an area no disturbance or something to that effect near where the the permanent disturbance is right like where the paved surfaces are is that kind of what you're 
suggesting it would be thousands of signs if we were going to go around the entire site you know with so yeah so the the minimum i was suggesting would be spots like um at the no disturb line you also kind of have your proposed tree line in this case so be adjacent to flags ac 11 through ac 9 for instance in that spot um you'd have a couple out behind the basin for the a looks like a e wetland system um, so spots like that where the no disturb is pretty close to the limit of disturbance. Okay, the question but that's off in the woods or, you know, further away where it's, you're not really even going to be tempted to. So, I mean, I would leave it up to the commission whether you want it literally on the no disturb line or if you want it at the this proposed tree line. And then the the second part of my question to the commission was, do you feel like you want to, and and I get what you're saying that it will be a lot of signs, but I didn't know if the commission wanted any measure to protect additional land um, because the site is maxed out now. So that would be additional signs more along the limit of disturbance. So that's something to decide whether we decide it tonight or if that's, or if it's continued and we decide it then. So yeah, I just had one question. Um, on a on a larger, this is a larger property than some of the ones that we deal with, where we might have four or five signs. So, on a larger property like this, is that is there a consistent like have we made other in similar situations put signs every however many feet, and or is it a is it a different treatment because of the size of the property compared? Is there there a difference in the rule? in the, the bylaw or something like that? Or is it at our discretion? So our standard condition, I believe, has the signs at every 20 feet. Um, if it was the case that we were wanting to demarcate additional land and we wanted to reach you know, a compromise because it would be so many signs, we could certainly widen that gap. Our standard is is 20 feet, but you know, understanding that this is very large. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would think that even in the base case, you know, spacing of closer to, you know, 50 to 100 would be more appropriate. Like if we went up to the driveway area on um, Route 30, um, yeah, like along the driveway, 50 feet. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and maybe not the entire stretch of driveway, just where, like, kind of like the logic that you, you said for the AC series, it might be between AA62 up to 56 or thereabouts, which is where the well and then tapers back off away from. Josh, if I can also just kind of weigh in here, as far as, like, industry standard, I, I know that this is specific to Grafton, but... That is not typical of what we've done in other municipalities for especially commercial project um, because their residents aren't living here and they don't typically wander off. You know, this this property is for business purposes. Um, so while I completely understand the need to protect the wetland areas and we agree, I, I think it uh, additional signage beyond what's kind of industry standards is is not common. That would be above and beyond. Right. Like you're not going to have maintenance crew. You're not going to have a homeowner going out with their lawnmower close to the, the wetland area. They're going to try to limit any maintenance activities just to the immediate vicinity. And I think where it gets close to the wetland area, I could see, you know, out in front of building B where we have the loading area close to AA35 and AA34, having something there, but these are going to be pretty remote areas where people aren't going to be tempted to, you know, um, quote unquote, disturb the wetlands. I don't think. So, Jan, if you were to scroll or zoom out just a bit, where, where on this site is actually like lawn areas that might be mowed by a maintenance crew, or is the is the perimeter around the parking areas? Is that all um, 
planted? Is that going to grow? Or is that lawn areas around the building? Because I think it's not about someone walking in. I mean, we obviously don't want people disturbing the wetland, but it's more about dumping within the wetland. So if you've got a maintenance crew, if one of these, if the property manager switches and you've got the second or third maintenance crew that's come out and is mowing this property or taking care of this property, if they're just dumping it, that's what these signs I think are most likely trying to avoid is to get people to say, whoa, I can't do that. Um, right. So again, it, it would, if is there a lawn area where they're going to be mowing in a specific area? Like where where on this map is there, or where on this plan is there lawn? So, um, Leah, or I'm sorry, Jane, if you go to sheet 701, C701, and I apologize, this is like the one series where we don't have an overall landscape plan, so we have to scroll through sheets a little bit, but it'll it'll give you the sense as to where we're having actual lawn areas. Just a minute, I need to pull that one up. Yeah. And I would imagine, like, we could even refine this a bit because I'm sure there's some areas of lawn that were, that are within our areas of grading where we could let start to grow back more naturally and not maintain it with mowing because the more mowing, you know, that needs to be done in those areas, um, the more costly that is. So I, th I would think that even some of the areas we're calling out as hydroseeded could be left to um, become more meadowy. Yeah, I'll leave that one to Leah. If she's got comments on that, obviously that would be a, a tweak that I think would be good. But again, there may be something in the bylaw or what, whatever. I don't want to disrupt the, the apple cart here. I was just more concerned with if there's a bunch of lawn in one area. And again, if it flips to, you know, something different great but if it's lawn and it's mowed then are they going to dump the clippings or push the snow or what you know push the the potential waste or yard waste or snow waste if you will into the wetland which is what the signs would be there for so that was my only correlation to lawn area uh which sheet did you say 701 it's uh, page 18, I believe. Yes. Right, that's helpful. Okay. So you, you can see kind of what I was saying, too, is it's really up towards the front. It would really just be that area that gets close to the driveway, the wetland area, and then down towards the bottom of this sheet, you know, the, flu the few flags that are near that loading area um, for building B at the bottom of the sheet to the left there. And then you can see the little grass area over to the top right of this page where uh, Leah was talking about. Um, we already have some fence and retaining wall there. Um, Like, I, I don't know that you would need it where the woods are beyond that. You know what I mean? Like, beyond those kind of areas that are tight to limited disturbance where grass might be mowed. Even in this case, it's, I think it, it kind of is in line with the point that I was making earlier. Yeah, usually in these situations, we're looking at how we've acted in the past in terms of what we've we've carried forth. So again, if Leah, if we've adjusted in the past for larger properties due to the number of signs, the sheer number of signs and the type of property, then maybe it's an opportunity here to adjust. But um, if not, and we hold to the 20, then maybe it's in selective areas. I, I'm just throwing out ideas that could be something to have as a condition, but yeah, no, I understand your point. Um, I'm having a hard time thinking of a project this large with this many wetlands around it to go check if we There's increased project. The, what's that? <laughs> a unique project or at least a unique site. So yeah, but I mean the the twenty feet twenty feet spacing is you know is something that we we put in the wording of a condition, it's not a direct pull from our bylaw or our regulations. So we have the flexibility to change the 20 feet um, if we see the need. I think that um, 
maybe as as a different route forward, um, but still getting the point across for the rest of the limit of disturbance, we would have a condition mostly pertaining to our stormwater bylaw anyway, that, you know, any future proposal for disturbance comes back before us for review. The main point being to check that the stormwater system could still handle it. So we could kind of piggyback off of that. Um, just stating that, you know, beyond the limit of disturbance is intended to remain woods um, or do some iteration of, you know, language surrounding future needs. And by future needs, you mean those additional parking areas that they may capture? Is that what you're talking about? Just if they were to change, need to expand. I'm not talking about the, uh, the reserve parking areas because we're already reviewing those now but if i don't know say they Enough thought that. they needed even more parking in the future i don't know what the change would be but just if if there were to be a need in the future to go beyond even the footprint we're looking at now we would just want a way to capture that that's going to come back for review and it was really intended to state woods mm -hmm. Um, so I think I think we've talked through the signage piece. What does what does the commission think about the uh, additional barrier for the AC wetland system since the rest already have a barrier in the form of chain link fence and guardrail? So that was that was that southerly wetland. It would just be something along um, whether at the uh, limit of disturbance or. Um, or up by the parking area. Uh, you're mowing between the parking area and the limit of disturbance here? Yeah, I think we have a row of shrubs there too, I believe, that should kind of serve as a deterrent from folks, you know, meandering from their parking spaces. Okay, so I mean, the shrubs would take care of cars, I guess. Um, I guess the barrier at the no disturb line here would really be for the sake of mowing then if we were to just condition that something like sp a split rail fence or boulders whatever the applicant's choice would be um just adjacent to those three flags i called out earlier ac9 to ac11 i think yeah so that's probably about i don't know 40 or 50 feet of fence what do you guys think about that no, that uh, commission. Does anyone have any comments on that? If we did boulders, Leo, how far uh, spaced? I mean, on this type of site, there might be the likelihood of finding boulders that could be put there, right? So, um, would the boulders? How far? How many would be needed there? Is it three or four of them, or is it? Are they tightly spaced? I mean, if our intention is to prevent expansion of lawn. And they're tightly spaced. Or, yeah, yeah. There's also a, a decent slope sloping down from the parking lot there. If you can see the, the proposed contours, which I think also acts as a deterrent. A deterrent, but your the wetland area that's there is now down a slope and behind shrubs. So again, it, what we're trying to prevent here is the landscapers or someone dumping stuff in there or whatever. That's typically what we're concerned with with the wetland, not just wandering from their car. So um, again, maybe the split rail fence is the most straightforward way to deal with that, Leah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the way we word that condition always leaves what they place up to the applicant. We don't pick. Just creating a barrier. Correct. We would just require a barrier so that there is an expansion into the no disturb. And all the other areas are already protected by their um, guardrails and things. It's just this one spot. 
Well, and, and we would pinch point too. I mean, if you look at the the space of the the parking space is probably nine feet wide, so you might have an eight nine foot between that the bottom of that hill. If that's grass that you're going to mow, you're going to have to run a couple passes with the mower, but you're tight in that spot. So agreed that we don't want that to erode and go into the wetland. So yeah, seems like a reasonable place to put a barrier. If you guys are ready, I can read through the rest of what I was proposing. Go ahead. Um, so Prior to commencement of work, the final revised plan set shall be submitted to the commission, reflecting the following changes, uh, the final hay to straw revision, the phasing plan, um, and the revised sheet C301, just to incorporate that all into one set. Um, a copy of the SWIP will be provided to the commission. We just keep that as part of the record. We're not reviewing it or anything. Um, the next two are off of DEP's comments. One is that the erosion controls shall be inspected prior to and following any storm events greater than one inch. This language shall be incorporated into the SWIP inspection language. Second one from the DEP comments would be copies of the NIPTES inspection reports shall be provided to the commission throughout construction. This language shall also be incorporated into the SWIP inspection language. Um, we talked about no disturbed signs and barriers. Um, the stormwater basins shall not be fully excavated until the temporary use for stormwater collection during construction ends. Uh, the operation and maintenance plan for stormwater shall be followed. Um, no pushing snow into the basins, sand and litter will be cleaned up after any storms. And then this last one is something we would do in conjunction with whatever the planning board is required so that we make sure that we're not double dipping. But I would suggest that we hold a bond for erosion control, site stabilization, and stormwater management. Um, so that's something that um, the applicant would submit an estimate for what those items would cost, we would send that estimate to um, to Graves to just double check um, that we're in agreement with that figure. And then once we agree on the figure, you guys would get that bond and put it in place and we would hold it again to be done in conjunction with if the planning board's requiring anything, we certainly don't wanna double it. And that's all I had. Could I just ask to clarify for the barriers? Are we could we in that condition if the commission is so inclined to have it restricted to the area the area in the vicinity of AC nine to AC eleven and outside of the NDZ? Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was intending. Okay, cool. Any are there any um, other questions on the proposed special conditions at this point? We're not vote taking a. I don't think we're taking a vote tonight on these, um, but they are open for discussion at this point. Anything from? Sorry, I was just going to say nothing for me, but I think I'm going out of order. No, that's okay. Thank you, Emily. Um, Jonathan, do you have anything else on? No. Oh, I've got nothing, but again, it sounds like we're waiting some comments. So, or I, I should say the finalization of those comments by folks. Yeah, considering we're, sorry, was someone going to jump in or is that just a, do we have anything else we need to cover on this tonight? Um, I don't think so. Are you able to take action on the waivers or are we going to do that next time? Just trying to get some stuff off the list and get closer to the finish line here. So that would be the uh, uh, trimming and planting and the no disturb. And yeah. the um, phasing. 
So it's the uh, fourth and fifth bullet point in my report. We we couldn't we could vote on them tonight. Um, we've we've voted on waivers ahead of closing hearings before, so it wouldn't be the first time. And did we did we talk about the uh, phasing in a previous meeting? I um a bit. I did see. Jan has it in another tab if you want to open that up. Um, they're going to need to expose greater than five acres uh, per phase just due to the nature of the site um, with all the slopes and the grading they're going to need to do. So uh, because we, um, we put that five acre threshold in our stormwater bylaw regulations, so now that it's officially in there and not just a a policy. Um, they needed to request a waiver. You can see uh, the numbers they're at. Um, 11, over 11, and like that's a, is that a six or an eight? I can't quite tell, but. Yeah, it's just under 12 and just under nine acres. Um, we had looked at keeping, trying to tighten up phase one more, but that um, basin that's at the bottom of the sheet that that serves the purpose of the phase one stuff so um when we first spoke about it at the first hearing i was kind of the mindset that it's going to be very difficult to phase this thing because there's so much earthwork that you're going to want to move you know what we're cutting out of the top of the hill down to some of the fill areas but it actually works out okay where we do a portion of that as a part of phase one, but the balance of it can be done as a part of phase two. So this is about what we're looking at. And these aren't these lines aren't exact, but it gives you the the general um, limits of what the intention is for phase one versus phase two development. Any thoughts on the phasing from the commission? No, I don't have it. It makes sense. We want to make sure that they're able to be, the contractors are able to be efficient when they're moving materials and whatnot because we can keep it on the site. It's less trucking and it's, I don't know, it seems to be a better situation for all, including the wetlands and the nature around it. So um, as long as it's, controlled with erosion and sediment control i don't i don't think there's issue with the phasing plan as shown okay and if i could ask that if that goes into a, a vote that we include language like the approximate limits shown on the phasing plan just because as i mentioned it's not it's not exact there's some grading that will happen along the edge of that line in between the two phases Okay, um, I guess before we vote on anything, I, I will open it for public comment. If anyone has anything out there, uh, please do raise your hand. Um, I realize there's not a ton of other people on the call right now, but I'll... There's zero attendees, but uh, yeah. <laughs> give it a couple seconds in case there's a phantom. Yeah. Um, yeah, seeing, seeing no hands raised and uh no attendees out there i think we could move past public comment on anything here um in terms of the two waivers uh do i have a motion out there for the waiver for the no disturb on trimming and planting i'll make a motion to approve the waiver for the no disturb trimming and planting as discussed Second that. Yeah. Take a roll call vote, uh, Jonathan. Yes. Emily. Yes. And I'm a yes on that as well. So that motion passes. And uh, the second waiver for to allow uh, greater than five acres exposed. Yep. I'll make a motion to grant the waiver. Uh, related to Section 7B2K of Stormwater Bylaw Regulations to allow greater than five acres exposed per approximate phase due to extreme slopes and proposed grading. 
I second that and I'm really glad you made that motion. Thank you both. Um, I'll take a roll call vote. Emily? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. And I'm a yes on this as well. Uh, so that motion passes. So uh, if there's nothing else, if the applicant would like to continue. Um, yes, Patrick, we would like to request a continuance. Thank you. To the 1020 okay. meeting or? Sorry, when's the next meeting? Uh, October 24th. If not, then it would be November 14th is the following meeting after that. Okay, yeah, let's plan on the 24th and hope that we have um, the final peer review from Graves. And if we don't, then we can, um, I, I think, Leah, yeah, we can just send you a request for an additional continuance. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a motion for it? I'll make, a, I'll make a motion to uh, continue the public hearing for 124 Westboro Road to October 24th. I second that. Um, take a roll call vote. Uh, Emily? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. I'm a yes also. So the motion to continue passes and we'll see you on uh, October 24th, hopefully. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks all. Thank Have a good night. All right, it's just us. So I suppose I'll go ahead and open the uh, 715. Sure. <laughs> uh, open the RDA for Hassan Messet Wood, 13 Sal Salisbury Street, uh, pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and Grafton Wetlands Protection Bylaw. The Grafton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 3rd at 715 via Zoom to act upon a request for terminate determination of applicability for the construction of trail boardwalks at 13 Salisbury Street, Hassan Messet Woods, Grafton, Massachusetts. You may find the materials posted online on the conservation page. All um, right. Leah, take it away, please. So I'm gonna play like both sides of the table on this one. Um, so Jan will be pulling up some photos that we took um, just as a bit of background review. Um, we had a couple folks approach us quite a few meetings ago um, wanting to lend a hand to help uh, with a muddy spot on the trail at Hassan and Messet Woods. The one they were looking at at the time was near uh, trail marker 10. Um, so from there, uh, we then, Jan and I, walked the whole loop at Hassan and Messet Woods with Art Allen from Ecotech to get his take on what would be needed uh, wetlands permitting-wise if we were to address uh, this spot, as well as uh, there's two others that we flagged while we were out there. Um, so what we're looking at tonight would be near trail marker 10 and trail marker 11, um, the third one that could possibly use some help. We're not looking at permitting at this time. Um, so in talking with Art, um, we talked through what what could be permitted, what could fall under an RDA, um, how to best fit solving the problem underneath, uh, you know, appropriate wetland regulations. So, um, the first one is uh, trail marker 11 is the photos that you're looking at here. So the photo on the left is uh, you're approaching the area on the existing trail. Um, so you can see, uh, so the photo on the right is the makeshift crossing that's there now. You can see that crossing in the, uh, towards the back of the photo on the left. So um, what needs to happen in this area, um, given the wetlands nearby, would be uh, there's about 20 feet of wetland on either side of this existing crossing. So we would need a boardwalk approach on either side of the channel um, for about 20 feet. And then um, 
the spot where we would need to cross, you can see the existing channel. Uh, we would need the footings to be on either side of the channel so that we fully sp span it um, without any footings going down in the center. Um, Jan, if you want to go the second one, I think that's that's all I have specific to that one. And then this is the other spot. This is near marker number 10. This one has about eight feet of BVW on either side. So again, about um, an eight foot boardwalk approach on either side, um, and then a span across. Um, this is about a three foot wide channel. Uh, the, the previous one is a little less. It's about two feet on the previous um, spot. So again, the footings right at at the channel would need to be placed on, on either side so that we get a full span of the channel. Um, could you pull up the like sample boardwalk photos that we found? Um, so the top one, this is just off of like a quick Google image search, but the top one shows how the footings fall outside of the channel to ensure that we're not directly impacting that resource area. And then we included the bottom photo um, to show how any footings beyond the channel itself we would want to have laid uh, parallel to the channel so that any water flow that needs to go underneath that boardwalk can freely move, um, you know, versus we would not want the two edges of that boardwalk. Like we would not want something running perpendicular to the channel for the whole width, essentially creating a dam. Um, so we had these couple of sample photos just to show what that would look like. We're trying to strike a balance between, you know, stating what's needed and what's permittable, um, but still allowing a bit of flexibility because um, this is volunteers looking to do this. They're looking to establish a work party in conjunction with the land trust, I believe. So we wanna give them some flexibility on the ground to, you know, not have something set in stone for what they're gonna do, but have some, some pretty good guidelines. Um, this will need uh, a waiver from our no disturb, just due to the nature of needing to get that close um, in order to build the crossing. And then um, a few conditions that I would suggest would be that the final design uh, that the work party comes up with will be coordinated with the Bay State Trail Riders Association so we can ensure that equestrian use can use these boardwalks as well um, because we wouldn't wanna build these but still have all the equestrian use go out and around it and keep the problem um, into the future. Um, the final design shall be worked out with conservation staff Work shall be done during dry conditions. Uh, I roughly was specifying that as no rain occurring two days prior or within the active work period. We can tweak that language if you guys see fit. I know there isn't exactly a dry season anymore. Um, also, no motorized vehicles shall enter the trail network for construction purposes. And then uh, conservation staff will be contacted upon final construction to hang flagging because uh, we would like to funnel folks, you know, onto these boardwalks once they are there and block off people continuing to use the alternate trails that have been cut around the mud. So we want to be able to close off those alternate trails, let them revegetate and really funnel folks onto these boardwalks uh, once they're in place. And uh, that's all I have. Happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Um, what type of material is typically used? Is that specified at any point or? We that... were not gonna specify the one, the bridge at Great Meadow that a scout rebuilt for us, I believe was just pressure treated lumber. Mm -hmm. We could, I mean, we could specify or we could not. I mean, if someone wanted to use like, you know, 
that Trek supports stuff instead. I don't see any reason why not. So it might it might be good to not specify. I know that stuff is way more expensive, but yeah, it's more expensive, and the manipulation of it also can leave a lot of like plastic dust around the area. That's true. Well, and it may not be designed for equestrian use either. If you're trying to get a horse over this thing, you know, you think a horse with a rider could be 1,500 pounds um, on four feet, you know, that's still quite a bit of pressure. So I would think they would want to use heavier duty framing lumber or something like that. But um, the equestrian thing might become a little bit of a challenge depending on what if if there is i don't know if you looked it up or whatever if there's a specific like they have a thickness of wood or type of thing to i, I don't know if that's something that we looked into or we just want to we know that there's horses on the trail so we want to ensure that it's done it's, to that standard. yeah it's more the latter i haven't began that dialogue with the equestrian club yet um I mean, we don't want to be, you know, overly burdensome on people who are volunteering to do this work, but this is, this is probably our most popular property for equestrian use. So I also wouldn't want to build this and only have pedestrian use, be able to use it and have equestrian use continue to cut a trail to the right of it, you know? No, I agree. Yeah, I just, but, yeah. that's a, that could be a significant cost that depending on I, it, do you know if they're going to want footings like sauna tubes or similar or is it going to be just surface laid with it looks like a four inch round fence post or you know whatever four inch round piece of wood that it's sitting on so does this thing actually go down into the ground to grab a, a footing or is that a no-no for these types of things or is that um, a question that we have to work out with no, that's a good point. I think the intention is to have the footing on either side of the channel be something that goes into the ground, but the ones for the remainder of the boardwalk can be just laying on the ground. But we do need to anchor down near the channel. So I worked on a project at a botanic garden in Massachusetts that's pretty popular in our area. Um, and they had a lot of root structure in an area where we were putting a whole boardwalk and deck and they actually picked up we we found a product called diamond piers and again i'm not hawking the product it's just it's a precast block and it drives in stakes into the ground so you don't disturb the root structure in that area as much but it's right. supposed to withstand you know this a similar um capacity to what a sauna tube would so it may be an option here um, and it actually might be cheaper than um, if you bought these these diamond piers or something similar. It might be cheaper than, especially if you're not allowed to bring mechanical equipment out into the woods, lugging stuff, lugging concrete, sauna tubes, bags of concrete, et cetera, would be a, a bear depending on how far away from the roadway this is. But um, just a, a thought that if there is piers or two, you know, footings like that that would go three, four feet down, it might be a product to consider that's I think they ran three or four hundred bucks a piece where you'd probably spend more than that trying to put a sauna tube in. But just okay. and again, I don't endorse any of those things. I just yeah, don't remember of course in a similar structure um for a boardwalk. Um yeah, I I'm open to help if I've got I've done some similar stuff in the past if you have questions or if I can lend a hand in terms of taking a look at is this buildable or does this make sense because I've done some of these okay. similar things I'm not an expert I'm just I yeah at least lend a construction eye on it and a cost eye so in the background I'm just looking at um the one that was done at Great Meadow and that was four six by six pressure treated lumber posts placed in the ground to anchor the bridge and then the bridge was built on top of it i don't know how that relates back to the equestrian question so it seems like the next 
best step is to open that conversation with the equestrian club and see if we can get the two to meet in the middle somewhere where it's not overly burdensome but still gets the meets our goal seems reasonable i think well at least from my perspective knowing that and i'm not i at least i wouldn't uh want to at this stage uh limit any kind of material or prescribe any kind of material but Just uh, thinking through you know uh, horses don't typically walk on wood boardwalks so there may be some other material to put over it or again maybe it, it is a trex or maybe it's an applied product that goes over it you know there's horse friendly you know materials that i don't know if it would be too slippery or something depending on how how they navigate that but a wet boardwalk with pressure treated lumber might be a little bit of a challenge um yeah but again i, I would imagine the equestrian club would probably say here's what we typically do um or here's what we 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 would appreciate but again if they use this in the in the winter when it's icy or snowy especially with the horses through the woods it might we might want to get their insight as to what material. Um, but this one looks pretty heavy duty in terms of the thickness of the wood. I mean, it's it's a thicker board. It's not too thin. So maybe that would be good to support a horse. Horses took this a step very far outside of my knowledge zone. <laughs> I've only ridden a horse like once in my life, but I, I just envision this giant animal trying to navigate this thing with a person on it and yeah. Horse and I have a deal. I don't ride them and they don't ride me. <laughs> Good deal. Right. I mean, do you guys, are you guys comfortable at least approving what we have here? And then we go from there as to whether the design has to change and how we treat that going forward. Are, are you comfortable with this rough idea? This was just, you know, Unfortunately, it, it spirals more and more from just, you know, folks innocently wanting to help with a wet spot on a trail, and then it becomes wetlands permitting, and then it becomes equestrian use, and it's just, you know, if we're going to do it, we want to do it once and do it right, but trying to leave the flexibility open to make sure we can meet the goals, but not turn this into a giant snowball. <laughs> yeah. At least from my perspective, I think that's totally reasonable because you you want to get something done that is, like you said, within those parameters of hopefully future-proofing it and making it work for everything that we can possibly predict. But at um, the same time, you can't build a steel boardwalk going all the way across everything. Um, it'd just be very expensive, Patrick. <laughs> <So> all, <laughs> the volunteers wouldn't want to bear that cost. So I, yeah, you know, I appreciate that this is a volunteer project, and it's not something that, you know, there's a donor coming in with a million dollars to build a couple bridges. Because, again, you can get extravagant with these types of situations depending on what the what it is. So, but I agree with you, Leah. I, I think it makes sense to move forward and, again, coordinate the other items. Okay. Yeah, I certainly don't want to dissuade people wanting to do improve stuff like this either. Right. Um, Emily, do you have anything else? I think this is fantastic. I love that people want to fix the woods. But otherwise, no, nothing of substance. <laughs> I think that's good. Uh, fully realizing we're the only ones on the call, I will open this up to public comment. <laughs> If anyone's out there somehow, please raise your hand. Maybe they typed their name in the box in white font. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Got to account for those. Not seeing anything, though. I um, I think are we ready to take a vote on this? Uh, just do the waiver first. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to grant the waiver uh, for... 13 Salisbury Street for the Hassan and Messet Woods Trail Boardwalk Project. I second that. Um, Jonathan, how do you vote? Yes. 
Emily? Yes. I mean, yes on that as well. Motion passes. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and issue a negative determination with the special conditions as Leah and we discussed in the meeting. Second that. Okay. Uh, Emily, how do you vote? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. I vote yes as well. That motion carries. And uh, I think we're all set on that. Can someone tell me how you pronounce the name of the woods? Hassan and Messet. Hassan, thank you. <laughs> Working on the names. And I just have one uh, follow up related item, which is the conservation land usage authorization that initially got this whole conversation underway. Uh, so we just need a vote to approve volunteers to do this work uh, on our, <clears throat> excuse me, on our conservation land. That's the last action item on the list. That's um, being done to some degree in conjunction with the land trust. Is that right? I believe so. Yes. Okay. A motion on that or yeah unless anyone has any comment questions i don't have any comments no. um if i'll make a motion to approve the usage authorization for pass the mess at wood trail work second that Thank you um jonathan any vote yes Emily? Yes. I'm a yes on that as well. Motion passes. All right, that's all I have, unless anybody has any questions for me. Nothing for me. I believe it's one motion. I guess I'll delay it for one second, Leah. Um, on 95 North Street, has there been any back and forth or any just any any pathway forward with the budget or with the with the work there or is are yeah. we kind of at a stand still yeah so um in talking with the town administrator we decided to ask rdla to give us bid docs for the entire scope so that we can go out to bid for the entire thing see what we get back and then decide our pathway forward funding wise um we let them know that a few weeks ago now. They set the date to get us bid docs as the 22nd of September. Uh, I did not receive those by the 22nd of September, reached back out to them to find out what was going on. They said they had to make a couple final tweaks to the plan set. That's the last I heard from them, but the intention is once once we get those documents, the town would have a week to review and ask any questions, and then they would be finalized and, and put up on, you know, combis and all those places uh, to go out to bid. Okay. If you need, need anything else on that, just let me know or whatever. I'm happy to help with value engineering or talking through the scope or whatever. Um, okay, again. thank you just didn't know where it stood i drove i drive by it almost every single day to go yeah. to north street to, to pick my son up so um i thought about it today and i'm like i'll ask leah so sure i didn't have anything else patrick uh thank you guys for giving me the easy job of saying second <laughs> did a better job than me <laughs> well that, oh, you did a good job patrick. you did great Oh, thanks. <laughs> you you stumbled far less than I usually do. I stumbled through the whole thing and then correct myself. I'm sure it's Jan probably just chuckles the whole time that she listens to it. So or curses. <laughs> I can't tell. But <laughs> I think that uh, yeah. Sandy roll might be the easier of the two because it's all scripted out versus the motion you have to come up with as you were saying it. <laughs> Sometimes. Helps when I can lean on Leah for yeah and, and everything. Have help. Yeah. <laughs> I have the easiest job. I just pull up plan sets. So <laughs> except, <laughs> you except the minutes. Yeah, I, I was gonna say except you're called by my name all night by everyone. <laughs> <laughs>
Jen, can you, Leah, can you open Jen? Can you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll make, I'll make the final motion. Uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. Second that. All right. I uh, like vote. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. I'm a yes. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>